ever hear somebody play behind a preacher or backing up a preacher on the organ or the keys and what they play sound kind of weird? I'm Chris Moses and this is Gospel Progressions University. Yo, you're killing it, bro. You're killing it. Said he want to take it up. He want to go higher. Oh, yeah. Come on and bless him. Somebody Bruh, what happened, to clap man? your hands. Clap Come your on, hands. Man. So we have our preacher chorus, right? right? Let's just say that the preacher's in C. And normally he would start here. So why is it that it has the sound that it has? Why is it that it doesn't sound like something else? Maybe that's played in major. Still in the key of C, but still around C. But it gives it a different texture and a different tone. So let's look into that and let's break this down step by step. And I'm going to show you how you can get for yourself this exact sound in another key or whatever key you want. So why would a preacher chord sound weird? Something that maybe you or someone else has played. I know when I first started to learn them, I could never quite grasp them and understand the texture and the color. And they do contain textures and colors. You don't have to be able to play music in order to appreciate it. A preacher chord is chords that are played in such a way when a pastor or a preacher, he or she is starting to kind of get tuned up. A tune up is like a pitched hum or speaking in a pitched way. You're playing whatever key that the preacher is tuning up in, but you're looking for specific things. You're looking for chord quality and texture. And of course, let's say that the preacher, for all intents and purposes, to make it easy that they're in C major or the key of C, right? Or the tonal center would be C. And there is a difference between the key of and the tonal center. And that difference is what they're actually doing. They may not play everything or sing or speak everything diatonically to C, meaning all white keys, no sharps, no flats. That's what diatonic means. All ideas are going to be expressed with chord quality in mind. And you know, that includes preaching chords as well. So when I say chord quality, I mean, this is a major chord, the quality is different from a minor chord, which in turn is different from a diminished chord, an augmented chord, different quality, or a major seven chord. All of these chords have their place. They're all using C as the total center, but the quality is different. So this is the first thing. People tend to make this mistake whenever they hear a preacher, they listen into what they're doing and they automatically assume, oh, the person is in this particular key. This is the key they're in. These are the chords that go with that key. So I'll go ahead and I'll do that. And it's typically a novice mistake. It's a mistake that I've made plenty of times. So let me show you how to overcome that and what to listen for when you're playing or supporting a preacher. Most of the time you're going to hear a preacher tune up in a minor key. Particularly, they're using a scale called the pentatonic scale. And it's going to be a minor pentatonic scale. Pentatonic means five. Penta means five and tonic means tone or note. So it's a five tone scale. And in this case, we'll say that they're tuning up in the key of C. So what we would do, we're not taking C major. That's the mistake that people tend to make as well. Well, we're in the key of C, so this is what we're doing. We're using a, a C uh, you know, triad. And that would indicate the key of C, it would indicate the key of C major, but there are other places that you can actually use a major chord or a minor chord and still have C as your tonal center, your bass, your tonal center, or the root. Now the pentatonic scale is a five tone scale and the major pentatonic is C, D, E, G, A. But the issue with that is that there's a major third. So to make up for that, we use the pentatonic scale, that's the minor version of that. So that would be C, E flat, F, G, and B flat. So that would be C, minor third, the fourth, the 
fifth, a minor seventh. And of course, they complete it. You're back at one again. So the pentatonic scale is a five tone scale. So it's the simplest scale to use. There are other cultural reasons why they use that. But it just so happens that it's a five tone scale and it's simple. So it's less notes for them to remember. The way the notes are spread apart or the interval or distance, it's easy for the human voice to sing this. Now, when they start, they're gonna start normally, let's say for this purpose, they're in the key of C. They're gonna go up a fifth or down a fourth. And they're gonna stick a lot to the tonic. They won't leave it. You'll hear things like that. So, da -na 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 -na. they'll tell you, well, the key center is here. All right, I'm not a singer. They'll tell you the key center is here. And automatically, you'll know right away. But to the novice, the novice may say, okay, well, I hear that they're doing this. So they must be, I know it's not a, a, a full minor key, which would be C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, and C, the natural minor. I know that it's some type of minor scale. So they may know the minor scale and they say, okay, well, number one, we have the C as the uh, tonal center. And then we have the minor chord. I know the, the pentatonic scale, the minor pentatonic scale. So they will get the key center around here and they'll hit the hits on a C minor or C uh, minor seven. And that's the number one mistake that beginners make. This is an incorrect approach because the character of the chord or the quality of the chord, I should say, it's a minor sound. So it doesn't have that quality where it's between notes or it's enough tension. When you play this, you're resolved. That's it. The point of these preacher chords or these chords that are played they are to enhance and electrify the atmosphere. In other words, and I say atmosphere, in other words, they are there to give us feeling of suspension, but not settlement, but not too much tension, but just enough to kind of resolve and to build back up. And I'll explain more what that means. So the elements of a preacher chord are tense. They have forward momentum. They want to be resolved and they're built off of the chromatic scale as we move forward and go chromatically. So now let's look at the available pool of notes. In order to see the available pool of notes to create chords, we need to look at the scales in which they come from that would best support the preacher chord context. And now the second scale we need to look at is the blue scale. The blue scale is just like the pentatonic, except it has another note. Instead of it being five note scale, it's a six note scale being hexatonic. That one note in this case would be the F sharp or the G flat. So it's one, three, four, flat five or sharp five, G, B flat, and C. We're looking at the Mixolydian scale. The Mixolydian scale is simple. It's a seven tone scale. It's a type of major scale. It's a mode of a major scale. In other words, the C Mixolydian would give us right away. We see, okay, we have the major sound. We see the major notes. We continue, but we have a B flat instead of a B. Back to C. And for those of you that caught on, it's basically like you're playing a key of F major but you're not because the key tonal center is C. So this gives it a different quality in a different context, but it is still a major scale. And we're using that one and we're gonna use also the F Mixolydian, which surprise, surprise is just like B flat because it's the fifth degree up. Uh, so in this case, B flat would be this, B flat major, but instead we're playing F as the tonal center. So when we go to its fifth, we start here. So finally, we have the altered scale. We're going to use the G altered scale, and that was B, G, A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E flat, F, and G. So that we have those scales in mind, you're not going to use every single note out of those scales. We're going to reference them. And that's what we're doing when we play preacher chords. These are the co most commonly used scales because there's chords that come from these scales with preacher chords. So let's explore that. Typically the blue scale is played melodically and not modally. We don't play it like we play the major scale. There's the major, uh, there's the first chord, minor, and the minor, and major. It's played more melodically and more based around a key center. Or you'd play, you know, the blue scale like um, with lines and stuff like that. You know, it's, it's, it's the chords that support the notes, but the notes themselves because it's, it's a six tone scale. It's not typical for people to use them as chords. So with the first chord, we notice a few things. Now, 
we'll notice that the tonal center is repeated. The tonal center is C. You see repeated here on top because the preacher is going to hum or tune up around the tonic or C itself. So it's in the bass, especially at the beginning. And you have this chord here, which is a D minor in the right hand. And we have in the left hand a C and a B flat. But if we notice something here with this first chord, that it doesn't give the chord quality right away. Or we would say that the chord quality, as far as major versus minor, isn't fully defined. What we have is something that is more suspended. We would have now the F here that plays the suspension. It doesn't give away. It's a it's the limbo, I would say, between the E flat, the minor third, and the E, the major third. So this is our first chord here. And so we know that the ear itself is saying, okay, there's three things going on. An established key center. So we know that it's C. It's on the bottom, it's on the top. The second thing is that we have the quality of the chord isn't fully defined. It isn't telling the ear, well, okay, it's a major chord. It's telling the ear, it's definitely an established key or tonal center, but it's still kind of hanging on in the ear. And it wants to do, it wants to do that but we won't let it because we want it to be suspended. Number three, we have the dissonance added. The color is between the B flat and that A, or the one and the major seven, major seven of B flat. So those three elements, tonal center, suspension, and tension brings what we need. So it gives the preacher a basis on where to start. It gives the tension that we need and it helps the music and the context and the feel and the texture to not sound so much like it's gonna resolve versus if you played this a minor chord just as the preacher was preaching it's very resolved and very definite but this is very indefinite so this suspension gives us that ambiguous quality so where are we getting that from well of course when we look at it now when I spell it out to you we have the C C mixolydian the reason why it works so well we have the tension here in this chord. What it does, it tells the, the listener's ear that we're going somewhere. If I hear this chord, even if I heard this chord here, it's a dominant sound. This is not the sound of a C major. It's the sound of a major chord, but not the key of C major. So the ear wants to immediately think F major, but we're not taking it there because we resolve in F major, we close it. So when you have preacher chords, think of it as being an open loop set of chords where you're never quite settling. It's like you're flying high and then you're coming in for a landing, almost, but no, not quite, coming back up again to build the tension, to release it and come back down, but you never quite, you never quite touch down. I think that's a big issue with a lot of beginners, a lot of people that's learning it. They hear it and they, they're trying to make sense of it. They may learn dominant chords and seven chords, but they don't understand that the texture changes depending on what the context that you're using it in. So every time you introduce a new scale, there's another context, it changes. And you wanna use chords that support the scale and scales that are chosen to give you the chords that would support the preacher, that makes sense. So it works all the way around. So we have our mixolydian scale and from that mixolydian scale, we have the dominant sound, all right? And we, like I said, we established the key tonal center and then we have the suspended sound. So we move from this chord and now we go to the second chord there. So there's a constant moving between the two. So what's really going on here? So now, if we do this, we could even have this as a major if we play it directly behind the diminished chord. So we have this C7 suspended chord here, and then we have this chord here. So before we even get to this chord, well, we can do it in two places. Before we get to this diminished chord, let me add something else about the mixolydian. This is what gives us our five, six, and one melody. So five, six, and one. So that's where we get that from. And that gives you that gospel sound because it would be really weird to play. That's why it sounds so minor and so settled when a person has decided to play this because the ear is hearing these tones and chords and notes and you're telling it where to go or where not to go because the, the responsibility of the preacher chords are to, to keep people 
kind of in the air. You don't want to let them all the way down. Sometimes you want to have them in between, but bring them up so high that they can't get any higher anymore. But all right, now we have to go the other way, but not take them all the way down. So what we're implying are several things. I'm major in a kind of, I'm kind of major, but then diminished in major. Or uh, we can do diminished and then we could do dominant because we have along with this our major scale our major uh blue scale all right so it's one two flat three three five uh six and one now with that i think this is where a lot of people get confused because the major difference between the minor blue scale and the major blue scale it's really just one note because you're adding the E flat to the second to the uh, major blue scale. You're adding the E flat as well as the E. So it gives it a feel of major, minor and major, minor and major. You can move between that. And plenty of times when we have this here, because it almost sounds major, you can add in your major blue scale. Now with the diminished, there's tension here with this. There's some tension here, but there's enough of it settling because we have this in a root. And we know that the Mixolydian scale itself is a type of major scale because of the C major in it. So the air is thinking major, and but at the same time, there's tension. And we go now to the diminished. Now we really, it's boldly stated. It's just right in your face, all right? And instead of it having a single tritone like the, uh, what do you call it? The uh, Mixolydian scale here. This is the single tritone that it has. This has two tritones. It has a tritone here and a tritone over here. So the tritones that we know that we have the tension. This is basically the crux or the, or the backbone of a dominant chord, but there's two of them. So with that, you have a lot of tension, a lot of color and a lot of suspension. So you have your height here and you wanna settle it, but not settle it, bring it up, Bring it down, not all the way down. So when we're playing this diminished chord, you notice, of course, we still have the root being played, and we have the root note on top as well, and it never leaves. We notice that there are two tritones, and also one, two, three minor minor dyads. That gives it the tension that we need, that what we're looking for. We'll also notice, though, that when it resolves, right, if we're playing major, we have our mixolydian, first chord, suspended, root, tension. When we go here, it does not resolve back to a minor seven chord. You would think it would, because all right, well, we have the minor chord here, and it's in a minor key. If you're thinking in that direction, well, why not? Why wouldn't we resolve here? Because again, we have our blue scale, blue scale, the major blue scale that we can use, that has the both the E flat and the E. So the way we would get that is, and we have the diminished, and we can slide right into the dominant sound. And that works because it's enough tension to tell the air that, hey, we're not settled onto the C major scale. This is the C mixolydian, which would imply F major. So it wants to go forward, it wants to be pushed forward. Not settled, but settled enough to tell the air, hey, there's something else coming, but not too much. When now we use licks, or some kind of scale along with that, we're gonna use it in a mixed way. So what a lot of people are not understanding is that when you play these uh, chords, that we're not using one particular blue scale. Yes, your dominant scale is gonna be the blue scale. The scale that you will use the most will be the minor blue scale, but you can mix them up. So if we move forward now, right, and we have this chord here, and now we're gonna go down to the three. The then we go to, uh, and then we have a five, our sharp five, then a flat five, and it goes to the five. What we would do is, for example, we did this first walk up here, right? And then now we go to the four. But notice the four here. All right, and what I just did was the blue scale, but I ended it kind of in between the both scales. The reason why that works, why you'd want to do that, is because now we're moving from the C mixolydian, which you said was that, all right, basically F major, but starting at C. And now we went to the F chord. 
But your dominant chord, dominant chords tend to want to resolve up a fourth. So typically you have this and, you know, it would resolve to F. But this would sound strange to you if we did this, right? We're playing the, the chords here. We start from three. Now we have that dominant now. This is where people go wrong again too. Because yes, you have the tension here, but it's not so much so that it doesn't want to resolve to a major chord. It does. But what we're doing is telling every chord at least two of them. The C chord, we're telling it to be a dominant chord. Every major chord is going to become a dominant chord, so the sound can be pushed forward. It's still major, but then it's still hanging in the air. But don't be tempted and say, hey, well, we're in, we're in F now. You know, we have this, this F chord going on. Let's play the F blue scale. No, don't do that because it's going to, you're going to shift the tonal center. Everything is still remaining over C. For all intents and purposes, we could play everything over the C, but we, we're creating chromaticism, these here, to push forward and they give the tension that we're looking for while not never fully resolving. So, so we have something like that. So this is part of the uh, minor, the major blue scale, because remember we have that. This would support the F chord here. Keep our C on top. It's all this is major blue scale, and then we can go down. All right, we have our diminished. That's the next chord. And then now we would resolve, of course, at the, or start the tension up at the next chord, which would be a G chord. But before I move on from that, I want you to understand that the pivot notes of the, mi of the minor blue scale and the major blue scale is going to be C, E flat, and G. Those are the only notes that they actually share in common. C, E flat, and G are the pivot notes of the major blue scale and the minor blue scale. So again, we have the three, four, all right? We have our tritone here. And then we have the sharp uh, flat five and our diminished. Because you don't even have to move this tritone again. Now you can here, we just go to our F, right? And we have the F and then we go to the F sharp. It's the same thing with F sharp and F in the, in the bass or your left hand, depending on how you structure your chords. And now we moving on to the five chord. Now the five chord is here, right? So we can say, well, this sounds very light, much so that it wants to resolve to a major chord. It sounds like it, but pay attention to the top. Remember, this top here is still a sus. It's suspended because it wants to resolve, or rather, from here and go down to resolve to a C. We're not gonna allow that. So the F, the G chord, for all intents and purposes, is still hanging in the air, played like so. But now we move on to the final scale, which is the, the G altered scale. Now we create the ultimate tension, where almost everything is changed. All you have is the tritone here, that gives the chord the character quality and everything else has changed and this is you see the fifth is raised and the ninth is raised d goes to e flat and a goes to b flat and now we can go right back to uh sort of what i would call a deceptive cadence keep us off a while the five chord you got the drummer going get the cymbals and the cymbals and you do the head and you look at the head and then, the and then you do this thing and then it's you, know, you got two of these and typically that's what you get and you get right back up to the top and just keep repeating the, the whole thing over again and that's what gives these preacher chords their quality. Because A, we know that we have to establish a key center. We have C, in this case, is the key center. B, we know that the preacher is going to, nine times out of nine, be humming, uh, preaching, or even sometimes singing minor pentatonic. So we know what? Well, we use the pentatonic scale and we throw in the extra blue note, that sharp four or flat five. So that would support it. And we know that we're gonna use the major blue scale as well. So we're not running into a tonic situation where it's just major chords. And we know that we're looking at the mixolydian. We also know that we have the diminished actually to help us and help to create the tension to release it and to create the tension again. And we have to understand that the entire thing is like a plane ride where we start to take off, the engine is going to start to rev. And then now when they take off, we're never gonna land again because then we crash the plane. All right, so we come here, 
Same thing, just at the beginning. We're not resolving any of the chords to any major chords. We're just using either tritones or suspended chords. And get right back up to the top. And you can, you know, you can keep it here for a while. And you would be silent and you got your... I mean, you go into a shout if you want to do all of that. That's just the G, A, and the C. So those are your preacher chords. Now, I talk a little bit about modes and I get into those changes with the modes. And I know that this video here, I don't have enough time. It's long enough already to actually go into those things. But because of that, I actually created a guide that would help you. It's called my mode cheat sheet. You can go check it out at gospelprogressionsuniversity.com forward slash mode cheat sheet. Completely free. You can sign up for it. You can use it and it will help you to have all, to understand how all the modes work in each position of each mode in the major key. God bless you and I will see you in the next video.